Hello, everyone. Um, I want to tell you about a, a problem, but uh, maybe let me start uh, by the short version of, of my talk. Um, so uh, a few days ago, I saw it on Twitter. This is a, a tweet by uh, Dimitris Kukulopoulos, who is my co-author, uh, kind of summarizing uh, my talk. So, so I thought that it would be nice to, to share it with you. So essentially what I want to tell you about today is that if you choose, run, if you randomly choose a polynomial, all of us of whose coefficient are zero or one, and the question is what is the probability that it is irreducible? And uh, what we prove is that uh, this probability is positive. And in fact, if you change the model a little bit and you allow the, to choose the coefficient between one to 35, then, uh, then we can show that the probability is actually tending to one as the degree tend to infinity. So, so this is the, the short version of the talk. And um, now I, I will discuss it more uh, in a more elaborate way. Uh, first of all, um, you, you may ask why, why are we interested in irreducible polynomials? And I think irreducibility is a, a fundamental concept in science. And, and I found this uh, quote by uh, Charles Darwin in his book, Origin of Species, where he, he kind of explained that uh, if there is a complex organ that is irreducible in a sense, then his theory will not be, will not be true. Uh, so, so irreducibility is really a fundamental uh, uh, concept in, in science, but I will not talk about complex organs, I will talk about uh, uh, polynomials. And as Philip said, uh, if you have any question, uh, don't hesitate uh, to ask, okay? So, so excuse me, Lior, since you time. Uh, irreducible, you mean which field? Field is important here, right? Uh, oh, so, irreducible. so you will specify. So I guess right? Charles Darwin was considering the complex numbers and uh, mm -hmm. I am considering the rational. So I will, I will, this is just a introduction to the talk. I will explain everything, but I will explain what, what is random polynomial, what random polynomials I take, and irreducibility will be irreducibility over the uh, rational numbers. Okay. So let, let me uh, start more uh, with more details. So for example, I take one uh, model of random polynomials, the things that I will say uh, can, can be worked out in, in other models, but let me take the model that I like the best, the model where I choose a, a polynomial of degree n, I call it a of t, and for each coefficient, I, I throw a coin and I choose the coefficient to be plus or minus one according to what, uh, according to the coin. So, so in, in this model, I have a random polynomial of degree n whose coefficients are independent random variable taking the value plus, the values plus minus one each with probability half. It's not that important what is the model, but this is a very nice model. And we can ask ourselves, um, what is the probability that this polynomial is reducible, namely that it factors over the rational numbers? And, and a very, I don't know exactly uh, who was the first to, to make this conjecture, but uh, it's very uh, natural to conjecture that the probability that this polynomial is reducible tends to zero. Because we know in many other, in other models uh, that polynomials tend to be irreducible. And, and if, as I said, I mean, there is nothing important about plus minus one. Uh, we can take uh, other models, for example, we can take zero and one like, like I mentioned before or any other model. And, and, and morally, if there is no reason, we expect that the polynomial will be irreducible with probability tending to one. So what can be a reason, for example, if we take polynomials with a zero one coefficient, then with probability half, the free coefficient will be zero and, there, and then the polynomial will be irreducible. So if, for example, we take a, 
the model uh, with zero one coefficients, we, we need to condition on the events that the free coefficient is non-zero, okay? And how we treat this conjecture? So we, we treat differently small degree and large degree devices. So let, let me try to illustrate the machine, the tools that we have when we want to rule out small degree divisors by, by considering degree one. So I remind you the conjecture is that the polynomial is reducible with probability that tends to zero. And instead of checking whether it's reducible, uh, irreducible or not, I, I check something much easier. Uh, what is the probability that it has a divisor of degree one? And in this case, I can, uh, I can combine two arguments. One argument is the algebraic argument, very simple algebraic argument. And the other is more analytic in nature. So the algebraic argument, the algebraic input is that if, if I have a, a divisor over the rationals of degree one, so if T minus alpha divides a polynomial with plus minus one coefficients, then alpha must be an integer. This is just the rational root theorem or Gauss lemma if you want, because uh, the, the denominator of alpha must divide one, so, or minus one, so it must be an integer. So this is the first input. This is the algebraic input, very simple one. And the analytic input is also very simple. It's just geometric series. Let me uh, explain. If alpha is a complex root of this polynomial, then its absolute value must be uh, in the annulus between half and two. Why? For example, if alpha is bigger or equal than two, then the term alpha to the n will, dominates all, will dominate all other terms just by uh, geometric series uh, estimates. So it must be, alpha must be between half and two in, in absolute value. And if we combine these two uh, 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 arguments together, we get that there are only two possible alphas. Because if you are an integer and you are smaller than two, you must be either one or minus one. So, so we, we just need to check if we want to rule out degree one divisor for polynomials with plus minus coefficients, we only have two options. And, and, uh, and, um, and, um, and then we check specifically for each of these options. So for example, uh, if I want to check whether a T minus one divide the polynomial, it's the same as plugging for T one and see whether I get zero. And then I get a, a random walk because I plug in one. So it's the question whether some plus of plus mi of independent random plus minuses equals zero. And this is just by, by uh, the, uh, by drinking, uh, by random walks, we see that it's uh, roughly one over square root of n. Okay, and minus one is the same argument exactly. Okay, so, so the last step, we use some kind of combinatoric argument like random uh, walk estimates. And in fact, you can push this uh, argument uh, to, to larger degrees. Um, so I'll do it degree two, and then you will see that you can push it to, to something like degree log n or, or something like this without any trouble. So with degree two, I have a polynomial t squared plus a t plus b. So if I combine the algebraic and analytic arguments, I get that a and b are integers, and they are at most four. So I have only finitely many polynomials that can divide a random polynomial. And what is the probability um, that, uh, for example, t squared plus one divides uh, my random polynomial? It's the same, the random walk argument, but now instead of in a line, in, 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 the, in, the, in the plane. So the probability that t squared plus one divides my polynomial is one over n, okay? But uh, it's possible that the polynomial will not be uh, cyclotomic like t squared plus one, but if, if I have a non-cyclotomic irreducible divisor, then the probability that something like, for example, t squared minus t minus one divides my polynomial, so the, the golden ratio is a root, is even exponentially small. And this is also something very easy. So we see that a cyclotomic polynomial give us a, a some error term and the other polynomial 
give us a, a very, very uh, small probability. And you can push this, uh, it's kind of easy to push it to something like a log n, but uh, if you want to push it uh, very far, uh, this was done by uh, Konyagin in 1999. Uh, when he, he tried to study this, uh, this problem that I'm talking about, and he managed to push these arguments all the way to divisor of degree uh, n over log n. And, but, but there, to, to get a, a divisor of degree n over log n, you need to, to, to put more effort into it, and not just naively extend it. So are there any questions so far? Feel free to, to ask. Uh, hmm. uh, so this is the theorem of Konyagin from 1999, and he, he dealt with the coefficient 0, 1, rather than uh, plus minus 1, but his argument were, were general, so, so the same argument works for, for this model. Um, and to go so high, um, he, Okay, it, it deals the cyclotomic polynomials uh, in, in a way that I mentioned, but to, to deal with non-cyclotomic irreducible divisors, you need to use a Mahler measure to show that there are not too many of them. And, and Konyagin uh, tried to solve the, the conjecture that I mentioned for zero one co coefficients uh, after a paper of uh, Poonen and Odalitsky. Odalitsky. So I will not get into more details in this uh, direction. I will go back to, uh, so this is small degree divisors. So this is very successful approach. And uh, let, let's talk about a uh, large degree divisors. Here we have a, a two approaches. One approach is to use small primes. And a theorem I had with uh, uh, Gadi Cosma um, um, a theorem that we proved uh, recently, that we published recently, is in the following model. So we take uh, polynomials of degree n, where the coefficients are uh, random variables, independent random variables, that uniformly distribute modulo the product of four primes. And uh, the smallest product of four, four primes that I could find was 210, because it's two times three times five times seven. I, I'm saying it slowly because I met too many people in uh, number theory that uh, they got, uh, when they multiplied the first four prime, got all kind of numbers. But I'm pretty sure that it's 210, I have a method. Anyways, uh, so once you choose the coefficient to be independent modulo four primes, uh, we, we managed to prove that the probability that it's irreducible is one. So we solved a version of this conjecture, in, we, we solved the conjecture in this model, okay? And what was the, the argument? I mean, we already know that we don't have small degree divisor, we need somehow to kill large degree divisors and let me give you a simplified version, of a, a proof of a, simple, uh, of a weaker theorem. Uh, I will give you a proof for 12 primes because it's slightly less technical, okay? So instead of proving it for an independent model of four primes, I will prove it for a, a random variables that are independent model product of 12 primes. So first, an, a notation for each prime I denote by API the, the polynomial, the random polynomial modulo pi. So I have 12 independent uniform random polynomials modulo fp1 up to fp, in, in fp1 up, up to fp12, okay? Um, and so I have these 12 uh, independent random uniform random polynomials and then I check what is the probability that a, a, a uniform random polynomial modulo p has a divisor of degree k. And this probability is k to minus delta approximately, where delta is this uh, magical number, one minus one plus log log two over log two. 
for, for this part or for, the, for this talk, the important thing about delta is that 12 times delta is bigger than one. This is where the 12 comes from. Okay, because 12 times delta is bigger than one. So by independence, since for each prime we, we have the probability that I have a divisor modulo P of degree exactly K is K to the minus delta and I have 12 primes, then the probability that if I have a, if I have a divisor over the integers, then it must, then, then I can just reduce the, the equation that D divides A modulo P, then I will have a divisor of degree K modulo each of the primes. So the probability that I have a divisor over the integers of degree K is smaller than k to the minus 12 delta, right? And then I just sum it since 12 delta is bigger than one, I can sum it. I just want to, to, to get rid of large degree divisor. So it's a tail of a convergent series. So since 12 delta is bigger than one, we can sum it over a large k. And as a tail of a convergent series, it will uh, tend to zero. And again, small k, uh, we, we just apply uh, cognac. So this is the proof for uh, uh, coefficients that are uh, uniform modulo 12 primes. I, I, will not get, I will not get into what you need to modify in order to reduce from 12 to four, it's just a technical thing, but I don't want to get into it. But if you have questions on this, uh, feel free. Maybe I'm talking too fast. This is why there are no questions. I'll take something, sorry. Uh, okay, so maybe I'll ask a question. There you go, yes. Uh, so I think I'm going to embarrass myself. Good. Uh, but I never, it never stopped me. Uh, where does this come, number delta come from? Maybe you said it already. So what is about this delta? Thank you, Igor. I mean, people will think that they pay you or something. Oh, but I actually attended your previous seminar on the same subject. Maybe it was planted in my ah, head. So you knew, ah, okay. No, I didn't know, but, I, oh, I didn't remember, but I don't remember what I asked you previously or whatever. Uh, so okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to it. get into it too much. I will just say where it appears and I will not get into it too much. So this number delta uh, comes in, in several uh, instances. Um, so so at least in three different setups, it, it comes in the in the in the setup of uh, what is the probability that a, a random uniform integer has a divisor of size roughly two to the k, and it's uh, about k to the minus delta. This was proved by L dash and an actual asymptotic formula of a more general thing by Ford in 2008. Um, it comes also in, in group theory, in the theory of uh, random uh, permutations and the probability of that a random uniform permutation has an invariant set of size k is k to the minus delta. And this go back to the work of Ruchak and Piver about invariable generation but in, in, a, in a precise way, it was uh, established by Pimental, Paris, and Riven in uh, 2016 and by Eberhard Ford and Gilliam in 2015. And, and uh, in, in polynomials over a finite field, uh, this was done by Meisner in 2018. So I, I don't really want to get into more details about that because it will uh, take me to a different direction. So. Maybe we can discuss it uh, after. But but if you look on these three cases, I mean, you think about uh, these three cases, then it gives you some way to com to to connect between uh, factorizations of integers. I mean, okay, to go from integers to polynomial, it's kind of straightforward. But uh, it gives you a way to connect it to permutations. And if you want to learn more about that, I mean, there is a this nice book by uh, that is a prime suspect. And I think, Chantal, I think this is you, right? I, and I, I think this is Demetrius, but I'm not sure exactly. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. From the author. Okay. And who's playing the guitar? I'm not sure. I mean, this was already difficult. That, that's Javier Thiruello playing the guitar. Okay. Yeah. Ah, Andrew is here. Oh, this is uh, okay. So, so I, I, I suggest that you read this book. It's very nice, and it 
actually include the mathematics at the end, and not, not just in uh, doing the comics itself. And okay, so yeah. So this, this was one approach. I mean, using a, a few primes, uh, but, but uh, yeah. And another approach, a different approach is not using a few primes, but using many primes. But, but there you need to do some kind of a trick to change the problem because it's very difficult to say something about loud, large divide. Uh, let's say your polynomial is, is uh, with plus minus one coefficient and you look modulo uh, the prime, uh, I don't know, 100 and something, it's very difficult to, let's say 101. Yeah, if it was not a prime, I would know about it by now. Uh, so, so if you reduce polynomial with plus minus one coefficient and you look modulo 101, it's very difficult to say something about its large divisors. It's a very difficult problem. I will discuss it later a bit, but it's, it's a, because it's a very sparse subsets of polynomial. So it's very difficult to say, I mean, something about, for example, the probability that it's irreducible. So you need to do a trick and, and, and this very nice trick was done by Brouillard and Varieu. Uh, so they, they uh, introduced a different method using many primes and then they managed to prove the original conjecture. Uh, but they had, in order that this trick will work, they had to use the extended Riemann hypothesis. So maybe I'll, I'll, again, not to get into too many technical details, I will try to explain how, the, how you, you use the Riemann hypothesis to change the problem from large primes to small primes. Sorry, from la la uh, large, device, large degree divisor to small degree divisor. So let's say that A is your random poly, uh, is your polynomial and you fix it for a second and you randomize the prime. You take a prime between say X and two X. Then the prime ideal theorem tells you that the number of, the, that the number of roots the polynomial has modulo P. So P is a random polynomial between X to two X. So it's roughly the number of irreducible factors of A. So this is the prime ideal theorem. So each irreducible factor of A give you one prime, a one, one root on average modulo random prime. And I mean, this is a formalization of the prime ideal theorem. And, and on the other end, but we don't have a, a fixed polynomial. A, a, we, we randomize the polynomial. I mean, in our case, the polynomial is random. But, and if we randomize the polynomial and, and we fix the prime P to be, and then what uh, Bouillard and Varieu showed that the number of roots the polynomial has is roughly one. I, I write roughly without explaining exactly what I mean here. So, so the, the, the point is that, I mean, if you are allowed to randomize both of them, then you get uh, the answer because you get that, uh, I mean, on the one hand, it's the, it's the number of irreducible factors of a typical polynomial, and on the other hand, it's one. So you get that a typical polynomial is irreducible. And in order to randomize both of them, you need error terms in, in both results. So to get a good error term in, in the first result, this is exactly the extended Riemann hypothesis for the splitting field of A. So you need the, the extended Riemann hypothesis uh, for, for the splitting uh, field of A. And, or you, you know, you need it slightly less, but let's not get into this thing. And, and here you, you, you do a, a random walks techniques and you get some explicit uh, a version of this. And there are a lot of technical details that I don't want to get, but essentially what we want is to, to change order of summations. And this is where we need to make sure that the error term will not uh, dominate everything. So this is how they, they change uh, the problem to, and you, you see, this is a problem about the number of small degree divisor AS modulo P. And, and I want to mention uh, uh, as, a, as an advertise a result that a, a student of mine uh, did recently, uh, Roy Shmueli this recently took their argument and, uh, and, and tried to lift it to, to QP uh, and he get a, a kind of explicit uh, uh, or a very good uh, approximated formula for the number of piadic roots. Uh, I will not discuss it too much, but uh, this is a paper that recently appeared 
appeared in the, in the archive, his, his masterpiece. Okay, so let me tell you about uh, new results that uh, we, we just put on the archive recently with uh, Dimitris Kukulopoulos and Gadi Kozma. So first of all, we, we treat your disability. So uh, what we managed to prove, we managed to get rid of, uh, of the, the arithmetic condition of the size of the interval that uh, Kozma and myself had. So in, in, uh, we managed to prove that if you take uh, H sufficiently large and you choose the coefficient to be uniform in one to H, is, then the probability that the polynomial is irreducible tends to one. And sufficiently large is uh, explicit in the sense that it's at least 35. So our proof gives that if H is at least 35, then the probability that A is, and you choose the coefficient in an interval one to 35, then the probability that it's irreducible tends to one as the degree tends to infinity. And, and the, so uh, yeah, and we, to, to get this uh, H, we had to, to run some straightforward computation on the computer, but for example, for H uh, 5,000 or so, uh, we don't need any, the computation is so trivial and can be done easily on, on a paper, on a piece of paper. Um, our proof is essentially to take uh, the proof uh, Cosma and myself had, uh, the proof with small primes, and to replace a uh, equidistribution model, model four primes uh, by approximate equidistribution. And then we, we argue the same way as, as the the one that I explained you. And we do this using a, a, a periodic Fourier analysis and the large sphere. Uh, I don't want this talk to be too technical, so maybe I'll tell you what do I mean by approximate equidistribution. But before this, I will tell you that it works for general measures and there is nothing special about Xi. We, we just need that they will satisfy some condition and on interval, this is exactly the condition that it's bigger than 35, but you can take other measures. But uh, yeah, so let me tell you what we actually prove. What we really prove is that we have a approximate equidistribution, namely, um, A is our random polynomial. So a polynomial with coefficients say between one to 35. And we look on it modulo a prime P and we are trying to, to approximate the probability that this polynomial in, is in some residue class modulo D, modulo another polynomial DP. And we compare it with the probability that a random, a uniform polynomial will be in this residue class, which is roughly, which is P to the minus of degree DP. Okay? And then we, we, we show that this is small where you, when you average over all uh, uh, moduli up to degree n over two. So this is approximate. It's sometimes it's called level of distribution. And if, if I want to be slightly more technical, in fact, I need, I need it to be slightly bigger than ever n over two. I need to be something like n over two plus some small power of n. And I need it, uh, and I need it for four primes simultaneously. So the argument will work. Um, but, but essentially, this is the approximate equidistribution that we do. And uh, for this, we use uh, the things that I said. OK. Um, let me tell you slightly more results if there are no questions. So in fact, uh, so in fact, can I ask a question? Since you said if there are no questions, but in fact, I do have a question. Uh, so this quality here depends on uh, H, I presume. Uh, this is for thirty-five. Yeah, and we show that for every measure, we we can show that we have a, a level of distribution, some level of distribution, but in order to get irreducibility, we need level of distribution and half, which is n over two. 
plus a little bit. And this we get only if the interval is bigger or equal than 45. And uh, so what, what would we get on the right hand side if uh, H would be equal to 34? Uh, on the right the, here? I mean, would you get something very bad? No, no, we, we get here instead of N over two, we get some smaller fraction of N. I see. We get the same estimate, but for a smaller fraction of N, and, and we, we did uh, make the computation, what is the level of distribution for certain intervals, uh, but I don't remember it by heart. It, it's but if you live here N over two, then you would get something on the right hand side, and I presume it would get, uh, it wouldn't be- We will not get uh, this nice thing. No? So you would get something worse, which is not sufficiently good. Yes. yes. Okay. We, we have, uh, our, our proof is uh, either it works or it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, I don't know what it gives. So. Mm -hmm. So we, we Thank you. The, the thing that we can play with is the level of distribution, not the, not the right hand side. But I presume you can play bo with both of them. Maybe, but uh, there is that our proof there. Is, uh, is a zero one proof. Either it works or that. Every proof is, uh, is zero one proof in this sense, but it's okay. Uh, I don't want to waste the time. Yeah, it's turned into philosophy. But for, for other measures, we get different level of distributions that also give us some, some results. Okay, um, another result that we get is, is for general measures and we get that there are no small degree divisors. So namely we extend the Kuniagin uh, theorem. So for example, if you take the model of plus minus one, we show that there exists theta such that the polynomial has no divisor of degree bigger than, uh, smaller than theta of n with probability tending to one. But, but this works in general. And, and for this result, we need to prove level of distribution slightly bigger than theta in the previous slide. And, and this works for general uh, distribution. I mean, you can choose the way that you choose the, uh, that you uh, pick the random uh, coefficients and uh, and for each measure you will have uh, this theta and and th this is as I said strengthen, strengthens uh, Konyagin result. Uh, I don't say that it generalizes it because we use a lot of his ideas in, in his proof so, so it's a continuation in some, in some sense. And, and the part that, uh, that I that I like uh, the most is about uh, Galois groups. Um, uh, I call it more, more irreducible. I mean, it's a nice name, I think, for, for Galois groups. So uh, we have a finer invariant than the polynomial being irreducible. Uh, and this finer invariant is, uh, is the Galois group of the polynomial. So what do I mean by Galois group? I take the polynomial, I take the complex roots, I look on the field Q alpha one to alpha N. This is the smallest subfield of the complex numbers that contains the roots. This is the splitting field. And then I look on all the automorphism of this field. field. And this is the Galois group of the polynomial as probably many knows. And, and uh, Galois proved that there is connection between the, the roots and, and, the, and, this, and the group theory of this group. And I, I, when we view this group as a subgroup of SN via the action on the roots. So for me, when I have a polynomial, this Galois group is a permutation group. For example, uh, the polynomial is irreducible if and only if the Galois group is transitive. Uh, so now let, let's uh, check uh, what, what is more irreducible. So for example, if I have a polynomial that is irreducible, I can add the root of this polynomial to the field. So I, I add to Q alpha, uh, to Q uh, one of the roots, say alpha one, and then the polynomial will factor over this bigger field. I can take outside of, I can factor by X minus alpha one. And then I can ask whether the new polynomial that I get, whether it's also irreducible. So um, I, I wanted to say the conjecture first, sorry. The conjecture is that, uh, that the Galois group is, is SN with high probability. And, and this means that, so, so this means that the polynomial is irreducible 
every time that I add another root. So what do I mean? Think for example on this formula when R is one. So I add one root to the field. And then I ask whether this polynomial 80 over T minus, minus alpha one is irreducible, but now over the field Q of alpha one. So the, for example, the Galois group will be doubly transitive if and only if the polynomial is irreducible and the polynomial after I do one step remains irreducible. And the Galois group will be SN if I can do these steps of adding more and more roots and still getting irreducibility n minus one times. So the conjecture tell us that, they, I mean, the conjecture is about the Galois group. So the Galois group of A uh, should be SM with high probability. This is a, a naive conjecture, I mean, a natural conjecture. And in terms of irreducibility, it means that the polynomial is the most irreducible. The, the, the best irreducible <laughs> that there is. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, and, and why, why this conjecture is, uh, why, why it makes sense to, to conjecture this, we have a theorem that goes back uh, to Van der Waarden that says that if we take a different uh, random, random model and mo uh, what, what some people call the large box model, where you fix the degree and you let the coefficient grow. So for example, you look on a polynomial of degree 101, but you let the coefficient go in a box. So this is in some sense easier model for this problem. And then in, in the 36, uh, uh, Van der Waarden showed that a random polynomial where you let the coefficient grow and the degree is fixed, a random polynomials becomes um, they have a maximal Galois group, up Galois group SN, and then in the years after, the error term, the rate of convergence was improved. Um, yes, go. Well, actually, how did you know that I wanted to ask something? Because you open your uh, camera and- I didn't know that you are following, uh, but anyways, yes, I do have a question. Um, so I don't understand uh, the, the conjecture, just the line after that. Uh, this means that a t divided by this is irreducible over which field? So each time over the field, it is defined over. So I see. Okay. When r is seven, so over the field q alpha one to alpha r. Okay, uh, this makes sense. You remove every time. Uh, every time you, you have, if you add a root, then of course you can divide by this root, mm -hmm. and after that it's still irreducible. Yeah. Otherwise, like uh, it cannot possibly reducible the q because it's not. A polynomial. It's not defined over Q. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what confused me. Anyways, okay, thank so, you. So this theorem uh, makes us uh, believe that also in a different model, although there is no real connection between these models, but uh, we, we believe, and also, of course, numeric uh, computation uh, makes us believe in this uh, model. And then uh, uh, the theorem that uh, we have is that if A is a random polynomial, uh, that we choose uniformly in an interval, uh, the interval should be with at least two elements, then the Galois group is Sn or An with probability one, a condition on the fact that it's irreducible. So for example, if H is, a, if, if it's an interval between one to 35, then the Galois group will be Sn or An with probability one. Yes, it's um, Yeah, is, is that uh, relationship between H growing and n growing at all analogous to let's say over function fields q limit and uh, degree limit or it's in some it's sense in some sense then yeah in some sense yes because you have a lot of primes when you let the, the box grow then you can take large prime you take, can take product of primes and you are almost uniform modulo so you have a lot of primes it's not exactly the same but morally yes Sorry, so here, do you assume that H is greater than 35 implicitly? Uh, the, the, the theorem as I wrote it is correct, but here I condition that it's irreducible. So ah, it's tomorrow okay. you will come with, with a theorem that uh, for H equals 30, the, the, the probability that it, that it is irreducible is one, then you will get this theorem. You will also get it. So we, yeah. Um, let me say briefly how this goes. So the point is that uh, by lifting the Frobenius element, this gives us a connection between the factorization of the polynomial modulo P 
and elements in the Galois group. More precisely, since the polynomial is, uh, here it's written approximately, but I meant is because it's uniform in an interval. So here I have one prime that it's actually equidistributed modulo P, right? Because uh, the polynomial is uniform in an, uh, the coefficients are uniform in, in an interval, then modulo P, the polynomial that divides the length of the interval, the polynomial will be uniform. So modulo P, the polynomial will factor like a uniform polynomial. And when I will lift it back to, to the Galois group over Q, I will get an approximately a, a random permutation in the, I, I will get a permutation which is, a, which, which factors are approximate, uh, like the, it, everything is approximate because there can be ramification, but that factors close almost like, a, a, I mean, the, the factorization of the permutation is like of a, the factorization of, of the polynomial module P, which is like a random permutation according to the, to the connection between permutations and uh, integers. So just by looking on the, by lifting the Frobenius modulo P for P that divides the interval, I will get a random permutation, approximate random permutation in my group. And then I'm, I'm going to use a, a version of a, a theorem of Wuchak and Pieber. So Wuchak and Pieber show that a, the probability that a random permutation lies in a transitive subgroup of SN other than AN or SN goes to zero as n goes to infinity. So in other words, if you take in, uh, inside SN, you, you take the union of all transitive subgroups that are not SN or AN, and you divide the size of this set by n factorial, it goes to zero. This is the theorem of uh, Wuchak and Pieber. Here we need a, a, a version of it that you can replace random uniform permutation by approximate uniform permutation. And then since A is irreducible, this translates to the group being transitive, and then we have a random permutation, so the group must be SN or A. Okay? Um, are there more questions? Okay. So uh, yeah, th this finishes the talk. Uh, thank, thank you very much. <laughs>